What can't a horse do? Horses have the muscle to run 30 miles per hour, spin on a dime, and buck like a fiend. More than 60% of the horse's body is made up of muscle. The development of the horse's muscles combined with free use of the shoulders is vital for the development of self-carriage in the horse. It is only through self-carriage that horses can achieve the best possible movement. Disorders of the muscle are one of the biggest issues for horses because they are athletes just like us. Equine polysaccharide storage myopathy, or EPSM, leads to damage in muscle tissue during exertion. Horses with EPSM are not able to derive adequate muscle energy from carbohydrates. In a normal horse, glycogen is the energy source used for muscle contraction. An EPSM horse cannot complete this process, resulting in excess stored glycogen. This eventually leads to muscle cramps and weakness. However, with correct diet and exercise, EPSM horses can triumph over this condition. Flight was um, diagnosed with EPSM back in about 2005. Uh, the way it happened was he was starting to have some difficulties with his hind end. Um, he was he occasionally bucking under saddle. He actually bucked off a rider that had been taking lessons on him, which was very unlike him. And when I turned him out, he would be racing around the ring, kind of bucking in weird ways, looking uncomfortable, stepping short with his hind legs. Um, we thought initially that it was his back and that he had done some sort of injury to his back. The vet came out and saw him. She suggested that we try some anti-inflammatories first, and so we put him on Butte for five days, but it didn't seem to improve at all, so we took him off of the Butte. She came back, and, or she decided she would come back and check him out again, do some nerve blocks to try and determine if there was a certain area of his hind legs that was bothering him. Uh, but when she came back, she discovered that he was significantly better. And we went backwards and traced our steps, and the only thing that had been changed was that his diet, I had taken him off of all of his grain completely. He'd been off of his grain for a week. And he had so shown such significant improvement um, that she said continue not giving him any carbohydrates, any grain, and see what happens. And he progressively got better and better. And so we came to the conclusion that the likely thing that was bothering him was that he had early stage EPSM. I'm Dr. Beth Valentine. I'm a veterinary pathologist. I have a special interest in diseases of horses and particularly of diseases of muscle. It's a disease that had been seen by, by people who study muscle disease um, in horses over the years, uh, here and now and again. But it really wasn't recognized as, as an important entity until the early 90s. Uh, Dr. Valberg at Minnesota recognized this as a um, cause of, of a muscle disease called tying, called tying up in uh, quarter horses. And um, the, the technical term for tying up is exertional rhabdomyolysis, which just means that the muscle breaks down under the stress of, of the exertion of, of exercise. So that was the early 90s, and as I was studying muscle disease in horses a few years later, I recognized that a very, very similar, virtually identical change was happening in the muscles of draft horses, and some of them tied up, some of them had other issues, couldn't stand up, or, or performance issues, or lameness issues, mysterious uh, lameness issues, and uh, so we determined that this problem, polysaccharide storage myopathy, affected a wide range of horses and uh, caused a wide range of problems. So um, we were looking at this, oh, I my computer going. We were looking at what we saw in the muscle, which was a buildup of, of glycogen. And um, we know that there is a complicated pathway for energy production within muscle using glycogen broken down to um, glucose, sugar, and then that's broken down for energy. And so when we saw this glycogen buildup, this polysaccharide storage in the muscle, we thought, well, there must be some defect going on in uh, that pathway. And that what the problem was is the muscle was lacking energy. So we looked at this and we said, well, if there's a problem in this pathway, well, why don't we 
reduce the starch and sugar, the grains that horses have been traditionally fed, and feed them fats instead. That's a whole different pathway. It's very effective energy um, and doesn't utilize any of the enzymes that we thought must be a defect in an enzyme in that pathway. There are similar diseases in people um, that are known to be defects in enzymes. So that's why we designed the diet that was high in fat and low in starch. As it turns out, these horses actually don't have a defect. There's something very unique about horses, uh, these horses, and um, they don't have a defect, and yet the diet worked extremely well. And what we've sort of realized is what these horses need to energize their muscle is the fats. And so our hypothesis was wrong, but our, our, um, what we attempted to do as a cure One of the major ways of treating EPSM in horses is to replace carbohydrates, um, the energy that they derive from carbohydrates, with fat as a source of energy for their muscles. Um, and so what Flight's diet consists of is straight hay. He gets Timothy hay. Um, some EPSM horses will get other types of hay, but he gets Timothy hay. And he gets uh, Timothy pellets that are mixed with um, coca soil oil, which basically the idea is that the fat from the coca soil oil will <clears throat> be utilized as a source of um, energy for his muscles, basically, instead of having carbohydrates. So he can't really have grains or processed um, grain-based pellets uh, or high sugar items uh, because his muscles have difficulty in breaking down those carbohydrates. To understand how EPSM affects muscles and digestion, there must be an understanding about horses derive energy from food. Muscles derive energy from ATP, adenosine triphosphate, coming from biological oxidation or redox reactions. These occur simultaneously while the principal sources of reductants for animals are the breakdown products of foods such as carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Adenosine-derived nucleotide contains high-energy phosphate bonds that are used to transport energy to cells for biochemical processes which include muscle contraction and enzymatic metabolism. ATP acts like a battery, which constantly gets recharged. Converting ATP to ADP can release energy, and by binding a third phosphate group, ADP, can be converted back to the charged ATP. I think of this as a metabolic difference rather than a disease process. Uh, performance horses that have problems that are put on this type of diet, um, the vast majority of them have done, as I said, extremely well um, in, in all disciplines and all levels. And so, in effect, I can't help but wonder, as we've selectively bred for horses for better performance, perhaps we've somehow selected for this type of metabolism. And if so, it's a good thing we figured out how to feed them right. This is Griff, and he's five years old, and last fall, we decided to have him looked at by the vet to see if he couldn't move better. And the decision we made was to give him some body work and change his diet so that it was relatively low sugars, low carbs. So he went to a rice bran, um, just hay, and changed his supplement so that he's getting less sugars. And he is moving better. Why we think he's moving better is because instead of the glycogen building up in his muscles, causing them to stay short and tight, that his muscles are more efficient and effective now and able to contract and lengthen. And so what we're seeing is he's building more muscle more quickly. His recoveries are much quicker. And he has quit sweating excessively, which obviously meant that his body was not being useful and effective before, and now it's being much more effective. Due to the spontaneity of this condition, a horse can go from being a fine performance horse one day to a lame or weak almost overnight. Owners of horses with EPSM can keep this in check with a specialized diet as well as regular exercise. A horse that does not have regular exercise can deteriorate much more quickly than a horse that does, leading to months of conditioning to build up strength. Horses that are affected by EPSM are generally described as having a calm disposition and the appearance of being very muscular. Along with regular exercise, diet is particularly important in controlling EPSM. 
In nature, horses are grazing animals, and the majority source of nutrients is by foraging via pasture or hay. A 1,000-pound horse should eat about 25 pounds of food a day. Although EPSM can cause some debilitations, horses can continue to live a successful and rewarding life as long as their caregivers have a good understanding of the condition.